Place your bets now as to how many of these I'm actually gonna finish. Do you have faith in me? I don't know. <laughs> Hello my loves, welcome back to my channel. Today we're gonna to be chatting about the series that I am hoping I'm gonna finish this year, that I really wanna finish this year. <laughs> so if you've been around a long time, you'll know that a big goal, particularly last year, was to finish a lot of series, to get down how many series I'm currently reading. Because I have a tendency to read the first book in a series and then never continue. Okay, I don't know why. I would like to defend myself, but sadly, that's the truth. I don't know why, because when I read sequels, I love them. I don't know what's wrong with me. My goal this year is just to have a net negative with series, so just to finish more than I start, which sounds easier than it is, because I've already started two series this year and finished none. <laughs> So I don't know how well we're gonna do. But yeah, I thought it'd be fun to do a video just chatting about the series that I'm hoping, fingers crossed, that I'm gonna finish this year. Actually, six are ones that I'm hoping to finish and four are ones I'm hoping to get up to date with. They are ongoing series, but ones that I want to like get caught up with. So I think without further ado, Let's just get into the first book. So the first series that I wanna finish, I actually don't own the second and third book <laughs> yet, but it's a series that I finished at the end of last year and I just really wanna like get it gone, you know? Like it's the kind of series that I wanna read quickly. Bear Town by Frederick Beckman is the first book in this series. I believe the second and third are Us Against You and The Winners. We're at this ice, is it hockey? <laughs> I think it is. Hockey, is that the, the sport? <laughs> That's a beautiful, very flattering shot. But she's so stupid. Yeah, we're in this town where hockey is this big thing. It's like this isolated town in Sweden, I'm pretty sure. The town's hopes and the town's happiness very much hinge on the hockey team. Um, and the particular, like, I think the teen boys hockey team is doing very well. And then an event happens, which often, uh, the synopsis doesn't mention the event, so I don't typically but that kind of divides the town and divides loyalties. And it was just a beautifully written book. I thought all the character studies in this were amazing. Because this, this series has a lot on like emotional connections between people and what have you, I do wanna kind of finish it this year. So I'm hoping to get my hands on the second and third book soon and tick it off the list. <laughs> Next is the Forgotten Women series by Jing Sheng. So I have the artists and the scientists left to read. I have read the leaders and the writers. So these are non-fiction books telling the stories of women throughout history that have been forgotten. I have spoken about this many times, but I love women. <laughs> women. I love women and women's history and I think it's something that's very important that we learn about. So these are these beautifully illustrated um, non-fiction books following these women and it has about maybe three pages about them every single time. My favourite one was The Leaders. As much as I love obviously authors, the writers for me was a bit like one note. Do you know what I mean? So I'm hoping that the artists and the scientists won't be because what I liked about The Leaders was that there was a lot of variety in what the people were involved in. Whereas the writers it felt like everyone was kind of doing the same thing. So I'm hoping these ones will be have a greater variety. But yeah, I just think this is something really important to read and I would like to finish off the series. They are really quick reads, they're all like 200 pages long but obviously they have these illustrations in them. I mean look, it's so beautiful. I always think the artists for these do such a good job and all the different, oh I love them, so cool. So yes, hoping to get this series, these last two, finished off. One that I plan to finish in January but I didn't quite get around to is The Themis File. So this is the second one, Waking Gods, and the one that I still have to read is Only Human. I love the audiobook for these. If you're gonna read these, I would recommend the audiobooks. They are full cast. This series, I can basically tell you nothing about because I only ever give the synopsis of the first book, but like the first 60 pages of the first book. Like I really don't think you should know much going into this series, but it's a sci-fi, let's just say a giant, I think it's a giant hand is discovered that's made out of materials that we can't make that kind of stuff out of and sciencey stuff from there. <laughs> and the whole books are told through these interviews with this kind of nameless figure who presides over everything, who seems to have very important connections, seems to rank above the president of the United States. <laughs> and even by the end of the first book, the plot is so different than what I've just told you, let alone the second and third. This one is so, I mean, I thought the direction the second one went in was great. I really loved the route that it went down. I thought it was really interesting. I've heard not as many good things about the third one. 
What? I love garbage. I've heard not as many good things. I'm a little bit nervous about the third one because also, you know, with sci-fi, uh, characters are gonna die. <laughs> And I'm, I'm not, yeah, with who's left, I'm not sure how I'm interested I'm gonna be. So I don't know, but the audiobooks are always fun. I think the actors act, like the narrators, oh, they put their into it. Let's just say that. Like they, oh, it's so good. I think their acting is incredible. So hopefully, I might actually start this this week. I might start this this week and then I can finish a series, my first series of the year. <gasps> Another one that is going to be pretty easy for me to finish and I have to do it is the Tea Dragon series. I have The Tapestry and Festival were left to read. I think Festival is the second book but it's a prequel and then Tapestry is the third book. These are beautiful, gorgeous, <laughs> gorgeous graphic novels. I'm obsessed with them. I, well, I read the first one and I was obsessed with it and they're the kind of books that I just keep saving for the perfect day. I'm like, oh, that is that has to be the perfect day when I'm in the best mood, but I need to finish it this year. They're just perfect. They're perfect and I, I wanna give them what they deserve and no, no day is ever the perfect day, but maybe for like some kind of readathon, I will pick these up. If you're getting into cozy fantasy, this is the graphic novel that I would point you towards because it's that kind of thing. We have these tea dragons that like help, they like grow stuff, they help you brew tea and we're following different characters in this related to that. And and it's just like comforting, warm, cozy. I can't wait to one day read these to my future children. That's like what I think about when I'm reading it. I'm like, oh my God. Like imagine sitting down with your future child and reading this. Anyway, that's a little bit weird, but. <laughs> you guys are so weird. Oh my God, you guys are so weird. I know. Everything is weird. Okay, this next series is a finish it this year or I am DNFing it. I'm giving myself a year's notice. Because I sometimes I just, ugh, when I've worked my brain up to reading a series, I don't like DNFing it. So anyway, it is the Daughter of Smoke and Bone trilogy. I never know which of the two I've got to read are the second and third. I always forget. <laughs> this is the second. Days of Blood and Starlight is the second. Dreams of God and Monsters is the third. So I spoke about, I think, what, what video was it in? Was it in my reacting to my year goals? Was it in my, I can't remember what video it was in. But I spoke about how... I have been debating DNFing this series because I didn't love the first one, but I don't know, I do love Lainey Taylor's writing, so I'm kind of hoping I could still get something out of this. So I have to finish this series this year or DNF it. Can I give you a good synopsis of the first one? Not really. Karu has managed to keep her two lives in balance. Oh yeah, she's like an art student and she's an errand girl to this monstrous creature. Is that Brimstone? A guy called Brimstone? Yeah. And it's like this dark world and doors to different world style opening, I'm pretty sure. Anyways, I have to finish this year or I am DNFing. That's the truth of the matter. It's one or the other. <laughs> And then the final series that I'm going to finish this year is the Stalking Jack the Ripper series. I have read the first two. The next one I need to read is Escaping from Houdini. And then I don't own the last one yet. What is that? Capturing the Devil? Yeah, I don't own that one yet. This is Satan's work. Yeah, this is now the oldest series that I am currently reading that I started the longest time ago. And I would just like to tick it off the list and finish it. It's sitting there, two books left to read. It can't be that hard. In this, we're following Audrey Rose and Thomas Cresswell, and uh, they've got like a romance and they're solving mysteries in Victorian England. Well, the second one's not in England. Is this one? Who knows? Yeah, this is London. <laughs> These I love for the premises premise I <laughs> of, but they always fall a little bit short for me. I'm not sure if I love Kerry Maniscalco's writing. I love her ideas, but like elements that I love about this, they, at the start of chapters, I know this is basic, okay? I know I'm easily bought, but like there's little pictures of stuff at the start of chapters. Wow. <laughs> I love that kind of thing. So I love Victorian mysteries, like any kind of murder mystery or mysteries set in Victorian London. <sighs> Like that is my kind of thing. I love that. I was deaf. I was very into Victorian history growing up as a kid. I was convinced for a while. I was convinced my job when I was older was going to be the. I don't know if you have this in other countries, but like actors who go around ho hosting workshops pretending to be Victorian. <laughs> That was going to be my job. So I love the era. I think it's so, it lends itself particularly well to the mystery genre. You know, you think of dark, grungy, dirty Victorian London. I should love this. And this is, I'm pretty sure, set on the Titanic, right? No, not the Titanic. <laughs> so 
So anyways, I definitely think I'll be able to finish this series this year if I set my mind to it. Okay, so those are the six that I want to finish and then the next four are series that I want to get caught up on this year. First is my Pride and Joy, <laughs> the Lady Hardcastle mystery series. I have read the first five. I don't own the next one yet, but I'm gonna get them. They're only like four pound on Amazon, so I'm just <laughs> gonna get them. I love this series. I love it. I gave the most recent one five stars. It was so good. I also gave In the Market for Murder five stars. And I think these two four stars and that one a 3.5. But oh, the audiobooks for these, they're so good. <laughs> I love the audiobooks for the Lady Hardcastle mystery series. So in this we're following Lady Hardcastle and her maid Flo. They were once spies together, um, but now they've retired to the English countryside, but they have retired to the murder hotspot of the world basically in the town that they live and they just get up to solving murders and solving mysteries together for the local constabulary is that a word <laughs> and we read from Flo's perspective the audiobooks the books are so humorous they're so fun they're so comforting and I want to try and read I think there's how many more is there out that I haven't read maybe four I want to try and read them like in around the time that they're set so I think the next couple are set in the summer and then I think maybe the next one's set in October so I'm gonna try and read them throughout the year roughly when they're set because this one was set in January and I had a lot of fun reading it around that time so yeah that's the plan I love these I would really like to just get caught up on them reading this the start of the year made me realize just how much I love them and made me want to dedicate more time I don't usually vlog these because like I'm so deep in the series at this point but it just made me remember how much I love this series and how wonderful they are so yeah the next series is one that I only have to read one book to get caught up on and that is the Ninth House Alex Stern series I need to read Hellbent next yes <laughs> <laughs> yes! I'm debating reading this next week. I don't know. Don't hold me to it. Oh no! The hard <sighs> Anyways, um... <laughs> I don't know if I'm going to, a little bit nervous, but anyways, this is a sequel to Ninth House where we're following Alex Stern, who work, what, what university is it again? Yale. <laughs> She's kind of in charge of supervising the secret societies there, and she gets wound up in loads of stuff, and I just love it. I love it. This, in my opinion, is Lee Bardugo's best stuff. Oh no. Six of Crows and Crooked Kingdom, a bit more iconic, but this is above Shadow and Bone, this is above King of Scars, it's so good. I need to read this, I've waited so long and now I'm holding off out of fear. <laughs> so yeah, I might read this next week, will I do it? Maybe not, maybe I will, I don't know. But I kind of want to read it while the hype is still there, so I don't know. But I can't believe that this was originally going to be like seven books and now it's going to be a trilogy. Like, Lee, how could you do that to us? How could you do that to us? Let's not talk about that because I will get upset. Oh, I almost dropped the book. Whew. Next series that I would like to get caught up on is The Singing Hill Cycle by Nevo. I don't own the next one yet. Well, the one that's just come out, which is Into the Riverlands. I've read the first two. And then at the end, uh, September, I think this year, uh, there's a new one coming out, I think called Mammoths at the Gate. So I would like to read both Into the Riverlands and Mammoths at the Gate this year. In this series, we're following a cleric called Chi, who kind of goes around and gathers stories it gets people to tell them stories and collates them basically so we're following a different story a little short story each time and I find that this series really is a love letter to the telling of stories and how that's been passed down orally through generations and the different methods of storytelling I always love so I love Nevo's writing and these are very short books so they are not hard <laughs> to get caught up on and then the final series that I want to get caught up on this is kind of another get caught up on or DNF is the Pinch of Magic series by Michelle Harrison so I don't own the next couple books in this series but I'm debating not getting them physically and just listening to them audibly this is a middle grade fantasy series where we're following these sisters in this first one you're seeing how they've kind of been trapped by this curse but I'm assuming that the next books kind of go off in these different directions. At the moment I think there's three more but I don't know if that last one is the last book or if there's going to be more in the series, I don't know. I really did enjoy this, like the whimsy, the fantasy, the sister relationships but I just haven't been picking up the middle grade series that I have started so I do want to try and make this one a priority to get caught up on even if that is just listening to audiobooks and not reading the books physically. Okay everyone that was the series that I want to finish or get caught up with this year let me know how you think I'm gonna do I think these are all realistic <laughs> I think I'm definitely gonna finish at least most of the ones that I wanted to finish so yeah let me know down below what you thought of any of these series that you've read I would love to know if you've gotten to the end of the video comment 
a star emoji. <laughs> I don't know, I love a good star emoji. Comment any of the star glittery emojis down below if you got to the end. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you very soon in another video. Bye!